I'll be doing a historical and physical evaluation of archery. Archery has been around for thousands of years. This has been proven by the pre-medieval depictions of archery and artifacts found. Around 2010, in Sabudu Cave, South Africa, researchers discovered stone points. The researchers say that these are probably arrowheads that date back 64,000 years ago. Bits of blood were also found on the arrowheads. That is not the only ancient arrowheads found. Archaeologists in Northampton Field discovered what definitively is a 13,000 year old arrowhead. These are not the only arrowheads found. There have been countless archaeological finds, like pictures of bow and arrows that are drawn in wall, caves and wall, in the walls, the Balsar Gorgia, Spain. Its paintings date back to 20,000 BC. Now that you know how long bows and arrows have been around for, I can start talking about the physics of the sport and later the historical presence archery has made in the book of history. Before I talk about the physics of archery, I will let you know I, I won't be talking about compound bows since that would make this video a little longer than intended. But I will be talking about the recurve bow and the longbow since they are very similar in physical aspects. But I do not own a longbow to show in this video. First, I'm going to talk about the parts of the bow. bow. You can see here on the arrow, you have the knocking point, fletching, arrow shaft, that's the arrow head. Right here is the bow's handle. Those are bow arms, those are connection points to the string, and that is the lower bow arm. But it's simply, a bow is a large handheld spring. When the bow arms, here are drawn back, they store potential energy. When you release the bowstring, the potential energy transfers into mechanical energy, propelling the arrow this forward. The force exerted to draw the bowstring is called draw weight. The draw weight depends on the draw length. The greater amount you draw the bow arms back is equivalent to the amount of energy stored in the limbs and exerted and exerted propelling the arrow. Now getting into the very brief history of archery throughout the world. All the dates that I'm going to be mentioning in this part are dates that the item dates back to, not the date it was discovered. Now, 9000 BC, arrow shafts are found. 1000 6000 BC, one new piece of the elm bow is found. 7500 BC, there's an, a painting of an ancient Egyptian archer. That is a very important part of history since it shows that they were used in war. 3500 BC, Egyptians established the longbow as the primary weapon of war. 3300 BC, preserved body of a man who carried a quiver of 14 arrows is found in the Alps. 1800 BC, the Syrians introduced a recurve type bow, which is better than riding horses because they really liked horses. In 1200 BC, um, the Hittites, sorry, butchered that, um, use a short recurve bow when they shoot from their chariots. Sorry. In 1066 BC, the Normans defeat Anglo-Saxons due to archery. In the third, now taking a large time gap, 13th to 14th century, longbow soldiers became the core of the British army. In 1363, the English king requires every Englishman to practice archery on Sunday. And on hunt and on holidays that law has actually never been revoked 15th century the tale of robin hood enters pop culture while editing this i realized that the most accurate robin hood movie has to do with a bear and a fox 16th century the value of a boat as a war weapon starts to get filtered out since there was an invention of firearms in 1537 King Henry, I think, like the seventh or eighth, um, and a few other people establish the Guild of St. George, the first archery Associ association or something. In 1545, a book about longbow archery by Roger Asham is published. It's like talks or something, I forget. In, 16, in the 1600s, Several archery societies are formed, and tournaments establish archery as a competitive sport. Now, I'm going to talk about misconceptions of archery. Now, the first misconception 
is some archer shoot with their hands. This is actually a very iffy thing. Since I, I suppose some archers can shoot with bare hands. They can, but shooting without finger protection um, can get painful and lead to damaged nerves. It can also lead to um, fingers with like no fingerprints, like rubbed. It's, it's weird, it's weird. Okay. Next one is pulling arrows from back quiver is easy. Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually much harder to pull an arrow from back quiver than from your side. Or, um, there's actually a true fact that's in history, as you can see on medieval iconography, which I put up on the screen now. That archers, um, actually had their arrows tucked into a band around the waist. That is very common in middle medieval iconography, so I can assume that that is the most historically accurate answer to this myth. Now another um, myth I'm going to talk about is like conveniently unlimited arrows. You know, it's like Hawkeye and the Marvel movies, um, it's like, slash, slash, bang, bang, has like, somehow a hundred arrows, he has twelve arrows, but you know, it's, it's a movie thing, so, I'll get over that. Now, the next one, is it's easy to do speed shooting. Sure, people like, Kilagulus, Hawkeye, and Green Arrow from TVs and stuff, along with video game characters, make it look like you go ping, 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 and take out, like, 40 bad guys in one, like, go around, but it, it just doesn't work like that, or drawing back blows, it's just like, it's just like, it's sometimes it's awkward just watching someone knock an arrow because they drop it half the time, so I really don't think that that is accurate at all. Now another misconception I'm going to talk about is that archers just draw and just wait. Okay, I guess that is true for modern compound bows, which you use pulleys so you can hold your draw, but I'm talking about like recurve and long bows, a lot of other types of bows that are not compound. Um, those you can't do, but it's like a 200 pound English longbow from the 15th century. It's, you're not going to be holding that back for an hour, waiting for your enemy <laughs> to come into range. This also plays um, with the next misconception, which I'll talk about now. Bodkin point. Oh, the Bodkin point. Movies and television, these common medieval points, which are go on top of the arrow. Um, Pierce, full 16th century plate armor, easily. Just, that is a set of Roman art, which is historically weaker than 16th century full plate armor. why it's just it's kind of ridiculous sorry these just kind of annoying but now i'm just going to move on to how the physics of archery relate to newton's laws and then i'll be end of the video yeah I, i'm not going to try to memorize the newton's laws so i've got my script here <laughs> so newton's laws connect to archery <laughs> newton's first law objects at rest stay at rest an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed in the same direction, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Connection. An arrow will stay at rest until acted upon by the bowstring propelling it forward. The greater mass of the arrow, the slower it will take to accelerate, so a lighter arrow would travel faster than a heavier one. Now Newton's second law. Second law. The acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force. In the same direction as the net force, inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Connection. Bows that have greater draw weight will release the arrow faster. This also depends on the mass of the arrow, which I stated in Newton's first law. Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, an arrow is fired at a target. The target will move back and forth. Equal and opposite, you know. So, some of the historical parts from this document, which I got, have been, um, from this amazing um, 
article talking about ancient Greek vases and Egyptian um, archery. It is by um, Emily S. at UC Berkeley in 2017. And of course, the sources that I got today are stated in the description below, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.